Well, this is a response video to Cosmic Pilgrim, um, provoked by the general question of defining atheism. And, uh, you know, there's, I'm gonna, don't want to beat this dead horse, but there were some points you raised that were interesting. And uh, so as a side comment, I guess I'd first say that, yeah, you, you really should have more than 33 subscribers. Um, you sort of joined at the worst time because it's it's hard. There's so many. There's there's I mean there's more atheists in the community, and as there's more, it's harder and harder to generate an audience. And um, you know the drama is so much more compelling. And you're very low drama. You're very low keyed, uh, but you are beautiful, and uh, you'll have your day. I mean I I think you'll catch on, and. Uh, because you're you're really intelligent and you're articulate and uh, yeah you're nice on the eyes and so I wouldn't worry about that you'll be heard um, so on the subject you know this is where we get to the vacuous part because yes even though you're intelligent sometimes you are a little bit blonde and <laughs> you know you fit the cliche for me just because yeah you're you're just such an optimist you're such a silver lining and and that's very much like Matt I mean Matt wants there to be a better answer he wants the truth to be better than what I think you can make it out of the facts I don't think the facts justify an optimistic truth I just don't I don't see them I don't see how you can make this this you know pig into something you know more pleasant than what it is this sow's ear into whatever the cliche is so anyway so regarding the the couple of books you referenced and the and the philosophies built into them um the idea that every culture um needed religion or at least was draw drew that conclusion is just a a fact of historical uh, of the circumstances of history. I mean, you know, history starts off, I mean, you go back in time and you just become more and more ignorant as you go further back. And so, as I was kind of sort of pointing out with with Matt, is that, you know, it's it's true that religion started as just a philosophy. I mean, they had to come up with an explanation. They got this thunder and they got earthquakes and they got all this crap that seems... Um, to have a message built into it it seems to be saying something and so it seems it's not unreasonable for an ignorant animal to draw the conclusion that something is making this stuff happen that it just doesn't happen out of nowhere um, but they didn't understand the whole mechanisms of the solar system and all this other stuff so what you know they drew with what are logical conclusions for their ignorance and as time passes, I mean, people remain ignorant, but then they get glued to the dogma. And so, I mean, I think religion is always born in ignorance. Um, how it matures is another issue. I mean, once it's established in an ignorant culture, how it becomes dominant and, and written on the money and just part of the infrastructure of the culture is another subject. Um, but it doesn't have anything to do, none of it legitimizes any of it. I mean, if you look at how the dominant religions got dominant it wasn't because they won a popularity contest they got dominant because they killed everybody who disagreed with them um, because they became very powerful um, that's the organization part you're talking about I mean yes religion tends to um, enable people to work together because they have these rules and this structure to live within so they they're going to be less likely to offend or or grind against each other and so there's there's this more capacity for a cohesion and the danger of that cohesion is is that they yeah they march in lockstep and and um, you know do some really evil things um, because they aren't thinking anymore they're just doing they're they're fulfilling um, a mission that wasn't wasn't um, inspired by good judgment um, so and it just you know Matt uses the word habit a lot and, and that's sort of the habit the habit it's 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 a bad habit though it's not a good habit it's <laughs> it's a dangerous habit so then the other analogy or metaphor or whatever was this wooden box idea 
and, and I'm not saying this guy, this who wrote this book, is lying or he's not credible. But I find it kind of silly. I mean, I you know that's an argument somebody can make. But I think if I put a wooden box out, especially in the atheist community, and said, "Well, look, a witch doctor says you know whatever you put in this box is going to disappear," I mean, you know, I'd I'd be willing to put parts more valuable to me than even my hand in the box to prove the point. I mean, I'm not afraid of no hocus pocus box, and uh, you know, I certainly would prove it. And I certainly know when I was a kid, I would have been. I, I would not have been in, intimidated by some story. I mean, you'd have to at least have me witness the box actually making something disappear before I'm going to be fooled by just a story. Because somebody says the box has magical powers, I'm going to believe it. Uh, I just don't believe, I don't know where this experiment took place, but I tend to think it must have been like a Catholic school or something, or I don't know, some place where superstition runs really high. Um, so anyway, I just, I don't know what the ultimate point of the book was, but it seems to me that this is a, I, I just don't buy it. I don't buy the story, and I don't buy the argument, and so I don't think I'm going to like whatever his conclusion was. Um, and then regarding evolution and, and the, the existence of the spandrel or the, the useless adaptation, um, yeah, I think we got lots of that. I mean, lots of that happens in evolution where... A change takes place and it doesn't create any negative effect it doesn't make something less likely to survive it doesn't make something more likely to survive it just makes the person different and because it's a benign difference it gets built into the structure because it doesn't get weeded out it, there's no reason to um, get rid of it and uh, so I don't know if that means much um, and so the ultimate question I mean you're basically say the only way to go is this indecisive atheism or this agnostic with a little atheism edge or something and I've had that argument before about the whole I don't like fence sitting I don't I mean it's to me it's too important a question for sitting on the fence and I don't think rationally there's a very good justification for just being an agnostic um, because all all religion is based on ignorance. I mean, you don't go into a scientific laboratory and study the periodic table and, you know, view the, the Hubble telescope images and do all this stuff, know all this science, you know, quantum mechanics, get into all this detail, and then come to the conclusion that, ah, there's a God. That just isn't, that's, that's an ignorant conclusion, not an educated conclusion. And so the fact that you don't believe in the silly gods of of human mythology well that's you know to your credit but the whole concept of God is sort of corrupt by the very idea that there's so much imperfection in the world I mean I just don't there's just no evidence of intelligent design anywhere in the system all there is is evidence of is a lot of crude forces and the capacity for horrible things to happen I mean it's it's a it's a more realistic view of the universe to realize that there could be some comet with our name on it that's circling around in the solar system and one day it's going to just go wham right into the earth blow the whole things to bits and there's nothing intelligent in this design it, you know we're vulnerable to being blown up at any minute we're vulnerable to an AIDS virus we're vulnerable to all kinds of things that don't indicate any intelligent design and just the raw the raw harshness of life is just to me glaring evidence that they're really the idea of a deity or an intelligent designer just doesn't fit with that and so I guess and then I would conclude with the the old you know John Lennon line you know imagine a world with no religion I mean religion has been a horror <laughs> you know I mean the bloodshed and the the slaughter and the you, you know when, when you think that there wasn't even anyone left to read hieroglyphics because of religious war I mean a whole culture was just eradicated um, so completely that you couldn't even read there was no one even left to read their language I mean it's amazing what has been done in the name of religion 
and uh, it's it's hasn't been a good influence so that's uh, I guess that's enough so good video always like your videos I always watch them anyway